Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make art from simple photos in Photoshop. Before we get started on this tutorial I just want to introduce you to my new book 57 Secrets for Working Smarter in Photoshop. This book is available on Amazon.com and it's also available for the Kindle. So if you visit Amazon.com and look up 57 Secrets Photoshop, you'll get to my new book. Now let's get back to the tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can take an image like this and turn it into an image that looks like this that would be suitable for framing. It's very easy to do and the process is editable so you can fine tune the result. To get started I'm just going to hide this image for now and let's look at our original image. Now I want to convert this into black and white shortly but I want to posterize it first. If I posterize it I'll be able to get planes of color through this image and it's going to be a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to choose Layer and then New Adjustment Layer because the Posterize Adjustment is one of those adjustments that you can apply with an Adjustment Layer. I'll click Posterize and then OK. The Posterize Adjustment allows you to flatten the image into bands of color. The more colors you have the more realistic the image is. So you won't want to have a very high value. In fact a value like 3 or 4 is pretty good for this particular image. I have a value of 4 here so I'm just going to close this dialog. That's a really good start. The next adjustment I'm going to make is a black and white and again I'm going to use an adjustment layer with layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. Whenever you can apply adjustment using an adjustment layer it's a really good idea to do so because the result is then editable later on. The black and white adjustment here allows us to determine which colors are going to be black and which are going to be white. So we could take the reds in this image for example and take them towards white or take them towards black or leave them at a sort of neutral gray. And I'm just going to work through the image with each of these colors in turn. Some of the colors will be in the image, some may not be. But I'm just going to drag on these sliders to see what sort of result I can get. Now I'm trying to get rid of the greens in this image and it doesn't look right now like there's much in the way of blues but there will be some magentas because that's a sort of pinky color and there's plenty of reds and yellows. But once I have something that looks pretty good I'm just going to close this dialog. The final step will be to add a filled layer over the top of the image and again I'm going to this time use the layer new fill layer and I'm going to fill it with a solid color. Again the benefit of using this tool is that it's very easy for me to choose another color later on. So I'm just going to go into this sort of pinky yellow area and just select a color like this. Now what I want to do is blend this color into the layers below so that we can see some of the detail from our image. I'm going to kick off with the dissolve blend mode. That won't do much in this circumstance but I'm going to run down the blend modes to find something that I like. Now darken is pretty good but multiply is probably a little bit better. Color burn is really interesting and so too is linear burn. Now you could continue and go all the way down the list. I'm just going to settle for linear burn because I think that looks really interesting here. What I can do though to fine tune it is I could adjust the number of posterized levels, I could adjust the black and white if I wanted to or I could even adjust this color. If I double click on this color layer then I can select a different color and click OK and the image will change. Now one of the other things that I might choose to do to sort of even out these grainy areas of the image is to actually blur this background layer with Filter, Blur and then Gaussian Blur. And you see that when I blur the image even with just a one pixel radius blur the edges there are becoming less grainy and a little bit more distinct. 
and I could wind up the blur if I wanted to or I could just settle for a one pixel blur. It's up to you, it's a creative decision that you get to make. Let's double click on this black and white layer and just see how adjusting the colors in this image are going to adjust how the conversion takes place. And so we're just going to fine tune that and then close the dialog. So this is our finished image. This is what the image looked like before we started, although I've added a small blur to it. We added a posterize adjustment to flatten the color and then a black and white adjustment to get a more interesting base for then applying a color fill layer to our image. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more tutorials on this YouTube channel and consider subscribing to this channel so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and techniques for Photoshop, Lightroom, Photoshop Elements, Illustrator and a whole lot more.